There we go. Welcome, everybody. Sorry we don't have an intro for this one, but I haven't made one. Um, if anybody wants to make an intro for our SHOT Show shows, feel free, and then we'll use it. Maybe. Uh, anyway, we're here on Tuesdays in the mornings talking about SHOT Show, and uh, Clover's joining me from Texas. Thanks for jumping in. Thanks. Good to be here. Sorry again for the uh, lateness. I guess we're not too late, but uh, yeah, that's... Uh, Sitting there wondering what I'm going to do this morning, and then Clover texting me. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm doing this morning. The thing that we scheduled for me to do. Or yeah. for us to do. But uh, yeah, totally had blown it off. Totally forgot about it. We had an auction last night, and there's another auction tonight. So that's what I'm blaming it on. Normally, the auctions are on Tuesday. So it's a little different protocol or routine or whatever. And, and it's going to happen tonight also. It's a big, their yearly auction over at Pot of Gold. So I'm just a little bit all, uh, you know, my schedule's a little bit mixed up well it's a weird yeah. thing doing this early too though you know what i mean i mean i, I like, kind of like it actually i'm kind of thinking this is actually an too. experiment to uh thinking about doing the daily show in the mornings instead of the evenings mm -hmm. and it's just to try it we've done it before but uh i don't like getting up in the morning it's weird but i can move a schedule around you know once i get used to the schedule who cares what i do but uh you know you know, Arizona in the morning is usually hot and gross. Right now it's winter, so it's nice. But, uh, yeah, half the year this would be – I'd have to have air conditioning on and stuff. I wouldn't like it. Uh, anyway, so that being said, we're talking about SHOT Show, and we've had a series of these shows. And on Tuesday mornings, uh, the goal is to – well, we just like SHOT Show, so we're just going to talk about SHOT Show regardless. But the idea is to go live and talk about SHOT Show in front of people who are maybe interested in this and have questions. Uh, she fires us out there, Milserp Duo. Um, that's exactly who we're doing this chat for is the people that might be interested in learning something from people that have been there before. It gives us a chance to recollect on past shows, talk about how interesting the show can be from various facets. And we've talked about all kinds of different things. We've allowed ourselves to go off on tangents. We try to keep the show around an hour ish. And, um, today we're talking about how much it costs to go to shot show. So any thoughts on that one? Have you thought about, uh, Anything that you had prepared or considered talking about this morning? It's, you know, it's shoestring to the sky's the limit. I mean, you know, if you want to, if you want to go lavish uh, and you have the means to do that, um, I, you know, I think that bottom line on it, spoiler alert, whatever you want to call it, is um, I think you can pretty much get the shot show in any budget, <laughs> you know, any realistic budget you set. So um, this kind of depends on, you know, what, what you require as far as getting the shot show. And, and the second, I think part of that too is, you know, your first time may be a more stringent budget than later on. I mean, at any given time, you know, money and, and economic situations and what financial situations or whatever, that's going to, of course, dictate, um, you know what what the budget looks like but um you know yeah i think it's it's just the, the whole idea what i usually tell people is just get there i mean whatever you got to do if, if you got to do it on a shoestring budget do it on a shoestring budget if, you know um then once you get there because a lot of the stuff we've been talking about you know we can talk it to death and everybody does but then you know, the thing is, you don't know what you don't know. And if you haven't ever been, you don't know. And so it's tough to get it in perspective to say, okay, I can, if I put back, you know, $10 a week, you know, or $20 a week or whatever it might be, you know, um, I can get the shot, you know, for the year, right? I can, that gives yeah, me enough. Budget it a sec effectively, that, right? That gives me enough to get the shot show on a budget. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, you don't you don't have that sense of urgency because you don't really you haven't experienced it before and you just don't understand if you've never been. So, you know, I think that, you know, the first time that you go, maybe, you know, maybe work it, you know, work it into a budget and, and that sort of thing. And then I think once you go the first time, I think you start getting into um the return once you go the first time you understand okay i'm i'm got you know x amount of return potentially coming out of this and it kind of gives you an idea of you know subsequent years and that sort of thing uh filling out the economy you know the price of of the different things uh of course that it takes to get there 
uh, and you can get a get a good sense of what you know what that budget every year needs to be right if you're going trying to go let's just say on the cheap right because i say budget and a budget is going to be different for everybody but if you're trying to go as cheap as possible right that's gonna that's gonna definitely fluctuate from from year to year you can always spend a bunch of money and go that's a good point you can always spend money so that's and you know we're capitalists we live in a place where there's things vegas is a town with a lot of things so there's always there's no top end and you can you're going to a town where people gamble and win some people win and that means that there's going to be stuff to accommodate those winnings people that have got extra money that they're done with you know they're just going to spend foolishly there's places to spend it foolishly luxury stuff and just dumb stuff and unnecessary stuff right um with that being said and, and it's probably a little bit worse than other towns because of that right it's a very tourist town and a very focused on let's get your money and move your money away from you again, like real smoothly and seamlessly. Right. Um, I was thinking though, um, as you were saying that, like, one of the ways to approach this would be like, what are the costs period? Like what are the things that cost money? And then once we figure out that list, maybe sort it between the basics, like the necessaries, maybe uh, the extras, you know, the things that would be nice, the luxuries, the things that just make it easier. And then, completely unnecessary because there's probably some stuff that people might consider either purchasing or bringing along with them um it's just unnecessary they could spend that money elsewhere bring you know not carry it around yeah well i guess carrying it around would be a different show but um well, as yeah. far as what are the costs i mean if you don't live in vegas you got to get there you got to stay there and you got to eat and yeah. you got to get around so i'm thinking those are about the basic costs yep travel uh to and from and local uh, lodging and then yeah, sustenance, food, uh, and what Millsurf Duo. That's the one thing I'm hearing. I mean, lodging is definitely up this year. Flights are across the board. I guess you would say are up this year. However, you know, this gets into you know any of the things that we're going to talk about with cost. We got to say that's a caveat. We got to caveat that by saying. You know, there are deals to be found if you work systems and whatever. I know people that are literally flying across the country. They live on the Upper East Coast, and the price they're paying for their flight is just nothing uh, compared to other people. I mean, you're, you're talking about other people's round trips or, you know, 400 bucks or something, and these people are flying round trip for like 130 or something, 130 bucks, and it's like, holy crap, right? Um, and it's just because they worked the system and they found, you know, and they, they worked it, they started planning early enough. That's another key to this, um, uh, that they were, they were able to work the system and find the deals and that sort of thing. Uh, now, sadly, these people, uh, and that's why these chats are important. That's why, uh, having your sphere of influence is important. Talking with people is important. Um, the people I know that did that, um, do not regularly communicate with other folks in the community, other creators, but you know, it would have been a wonderful thing when they found that to pick up the phone, to do a private post, to a text, do something and go, um, just want to let y'all know, I just booked a flight all the way across the country round trip for 130 bucks, whatever it was, you know, you might want to check into this airline or this website or this code or whatever. Right and share that information. Once they secured theirs, of course, share that information. Um, I'm not a big fan of, of blasting things out there before. It's kind of like, you know, Black Friday sales or, or, you know, some crazy something that's going on that, you know, quantities may be limited or whatever. You don't want to screw yourself out of a cheap flight by talking about said, you know, first rule of flight club, don't talk about flight club, right? Don't screw yourself out of that cheap flight by talking about that cheap flight before you've secured that cheap flight. <laughs> You know, um, but, you know, even with the higher prices, I agree with, again, with what Millsurf Duo is saying, but even with the, the what seems to be higher prices in uh, air travel and lodging this year, there are still deals out there to be had and ways to, let's just say, mitigate um, that cost, maybe not down to, you know, what it was in years previous, but, you know, in some cases maybe but uh but at least save a little bit um all right so that was you talked about a bunch of stuff there i would say the 
cost of airfare is just like the cost of a hotel. You can find a $30 hotel and then there's a $300 hotel and there's going to be a different experience in each of those hotels. And some people who travel a lot and people who travel, I guess people who just travel occasionally, but anyway, people, some people that I'm going to say like the comfort or the experience of their travel is important to them. Other people, if they could be on a cattle car or like in the back of a, you know, crowded plane, uh, you know, with bad air conditioning. And as long as they got there cheap, they'll be okay with it. Some people, if they don't enjoy the experience of the flight, you know, that's worth the money to them. So that there's just that end. Don't, don't be, have unrealistic expectations. And, um, but I, I agree with you that there's, you listen to 10 people and you'll get a range of, you you rarely wow. hear the same experience from those 10 people. Everybody's experiences is a bit different, but yeah. Vegas is one of those places I wouldn't call, I'm going to say commuter. There's like, just like LA or Chicago or New York or something, there's commuter flights. There's flights that happen pretty much no matter what, because they're shuttling planes. It's one of their hubs. It gets enough tourism or whatever, enough action at a unpredictable basis that it's worth them to schedule those flights. Now, when it's super expensive gas, they might not be, so they might be piling things up, but still Vegas is going to be on the cheaper end compared to little airport that gets rarely used in the middle of nowhere, right? A non-destination point um, where you'll have to take extra flights and stuff. Typically people can get to Vegas in one flight and there's, there's strategies. You can just go online. This is 2022, go online and say how to get a cheap flight. You know, what's the best way to get to Vegas and consider part of, making part of that your, your content, right? Your travel is something you're paying for. It's a big chunk yeah. of your travel. You're allowed to, get a return on your investment. You're investing in getting yourself to SHOT Show. Well, getting yourself there is half the fun, half the battle, half the plan. So, uh, you know, you can have another channel. You're not restricted to have one channel. There's a lot of benefit to having a channel that isn't gun related. That's your travel blog. That's your food diary. If it's your food channel and you're going to be talking about the restaurants you eat at, then travel is part of that. If it's a car channel and you talk about the rental cars and that you're going to see in Vegas, your travel to Vegas is part of that. So if you get a good price on a flight, you have a good or maybe a bad experience on a flight, you're allowed to make a, a review of that. You're allowed to post a blog post or a, a specific video about it. And, you know, in the hopes that you're going to get some kind of affiliate sale or, you know, extra reach, or maybe even just the travel agent or person that you worked with to make that happen a plug for them you know your travel is a third or a half of your expenses possibly my flights were brought to you by my local gun shop we're brought to you by the the holster maker in town we're brought to you by the range that is one wish they could have got to shot show but i'm going as their wrestler representative yeah and and just to uh, see so you put cost collaboration out there as a note but you know, one of the things uh, we talk about flights, but we're just talking about getting to shot, right? Getting to Vegas, you know, and one of those is, uh, you know, with cost collaboration that can be done uh, is driving. So uh, hang on one sec. Sorry, weather's got mouth screwed up. Occasionally I got a cough, but, um, you know, there's a couple of ways to accomplish the whole driving thing versus the flight. You got to look at that. Let's take, for example, um, you know, the thing with driving is what you save in money, you lose in time, right? That's one thing that you got to realize with, with driving for the most part. Um, it's definitely going to be slower driving, even if you are in a situation that you've got, you know, you can split a 24-hour drive, let's just say three ways, um, you know, eight-hour drive, three people, you know, and go straight through on a 24-hour drive. Um, you know, it that still takes more time. Like you can fly the 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 time to drive twenty four hours is a three hour, two or three hour or something flight, right? So, you know, you got to have the time. So that's one thing. Um, but it's if you have the time, um, you know, you could do that collaboration with a gun shop that's going. You could do that that drive with, you know, another creator that's going. Um you know, just somebody else that's, that's going to, you know, shot. Right. Um, and once you factor in the cost of the, because we haven't gotten into the travel while we're in Vegas yet, but you know, even if we're talking about a rental, 
oftentimes you can do a rental and then by the time you do a rental and split that two ways for having it for the entire week or whatever that case may be um it comes out to roughly about the same price as what the initial flight for two people would be round trip to vegas and then you take that and then you realize, oh, but then I don't have to pay for Ubers while I'm there. I have the freedom and flexibility to go and see and do because we have a vehicle when we're there. Is that the cost of the, the, tra- the travel and transport within Vegas itself is there. So, you know, you have those perks. You have the perks of, oh, if I get, you know, product that I can't bring on a plane, I can take home. There's just all these other things that, that play into the experience, right? So you know, that's, that's certainly a possibility. Um, and then what cuts that, I think even cheaper. And, and I've talked about this and, and, uh, it's one of the things that, that, uh, affects me in my trip is just, if you've got a vehicle that's new enough, reliable enough, that sort of thing, you can cut the cost of, of, uh, the travel to Vegas, just nearly to, to Nick's nearly to Neil. I mean, you're talking about splitting the cost of some fuel and that is it. That's all you have. Right. So by the time you do that and you add a person or two, you know, in that collaboration, you know, to split the drive time up, uh, to maybe be able to drive straight through or straight back or whatever the case may be, um, which shortens the time again, you know, time is time is money. You get it. Then, um, you know, you save even more. I mean, you don't have the that that big cost of, um, of you know the the rental car or the flight. And so, from wife and I, that's that's where we sit at this point. It's like we're making a car payment every month anyway. Um, you know, or you know, and, and, you know, we've got the vehicle uh, to have a dependable, nice vehicle to go and do and get groceries and drive to work and do the things that we do around here. Um, why, you know, let's put a little extra money into the care and maintenance on that vehicle. Let's put a little extra money into the roadside assistance, AAA and other things that we can benefit on all the time, regardless of shot show time or traveling for trips. And then when we get ready to go on a trip, we don't even have to worry about reservations or flights or any of that. When the, the vehicle's there, we make sure that the tires are good. We make sure that the maintenance is, is all taken care of. We fuel it up and then we go, you know pretty much that simple so um that's my thoughts on on the travel you know back and forth so i'm gonna challenge everybody at home and if you're interested in taking the challenge first off keep in mind that uh, if you go look up any of this stuff it's gonna maybe give you um you're gonna get all kinds of ads for travel and stuff so if you don't want to do it keep you know where you understand but if you feel like doing it uh, and you got the time and ability wherever you're at um if you've got a travel website that you use, if you go, so there's different ways to do travel. I'm not a traveler, but I have traveled, right? So, uh, and I travel in my way and I know there's other ways to do it, but I'm familiar with other people and the way that they do things uh, as far as getting around and for business and for this kind of thing and for just vacations, right? So you can go straight to a source like a airline and go straight to them. You can go through a travel agent, which is somebody who's familiar with the scene and is, you know, you're paying them to get you the best deal. Uh, and then you can go through like a, an agency online, like a, I don't know what they're all called anymore. Price, price, something, travel, something. Right. Uh, and then there's probably other options. So if you've got an option or if you're exploring those options, again, we're talking about creating content that ultimately when we go to shot show, at least if you're listening to this show, you're either a um, manufacturer or somebody setting up, or just you know, somebody on, is just setting up a booth at Shot Show, and hopefully you're listening and welcome to be here. Uh, if you're just attending Shot Show, I guess, or if you're um, media, then you know we're there's there's a million different ways of doing this. But if you're uh, creating content, then again, the trip itself, a massive portion of your time and your effort. Uh, you can rush it. You can get there as fast as possible. I think I've talked about it enough in other shows. I appreciate after 18 years, what have I always said? Be fluid and appreciate the time you've got. You're, you're getting flooded with stuff. You can get accustomed to getting flooded with stuff so that you're, you're not collecting it all, but you're experiencing it all. And that's a different type of experience than getting a fire hose and walking away with a shot glass of content. 
you can also just experience the fire hose and then be able to describe the, the, the experience to people. Part of that experience is the travel. Practically, you're going to make way more money on the travel than on your SHOT Show stuff. Unless you've got an agreement with a manufacturer, a shop, somebody who's paying you to create content, you know, so that you're literally getting just paid to create content, which is super possible. This is a giant industry. It's the fifth largest show in Vegas. If you don't see the opportunity for creating, you know, what do you call it, income from this, then, you know, I just don't pursue that. But there's certainly ways. I and mean, I talk to people all the time who make, they, they make all their money at SHOT Show. That's what SHOT Show's for. So there's, you can do it on your own money. You can do it on somebody else's money. But either way, if you're talking about the travel, you've got, I don't know, Clover probably loves way more than I do about it, but I'm going to just use the example of if you're making three bucks per thousand videos on YouTube, a thousand views to a video on YouTube uh, per a gun video, what's travel going to be? Eight to 13 to maybe up to the closer to 30, $20 because people do travel and they care about it and it's not restricted at all. Tons of people interested in it and you're traveling to Vegas and probably travel into Vegas. Well, look, at you're either traveling to Vegas in an interesting way in a luxury way or in an economical way. In either way, there's going to be other people that are probably interested in travel into Vegas that way or would be curious about your experiences traveling into Vegas in those ways. If you go to Vegas, if you go to SHOT Show three years in a row, what if you plan to do it each way? Start with the easiest, cheapest way first and then decide next year, I'm going to budget like what Clover said, X amount of dollars a month that I think I'm going to need so that when I go to SHOT Show next year, I've paid for it already comfortably and then i can go luxury by getting you know help with other people and, and whatever so documenting the travel and whatever route you go is an opportunity right you can ignore it and you can get it as fast and cheap as possible you're going to get that experience and if you're talking about wrapping it around your shot show experience which is at least your only thing you're going to do at shot show level each year if you go to nra and all these other things then sure you've you've got less interest in wrapping up SHOT Show real nice. But if the SHOT Show is your one thing and it's the thing you're spending all your time and effort on, hurrying up and getting there in the cheapest way possible and experience it and then cheap and hurrying up and getting home the cheapest way possible as fast as possible is different than saying to whatever your other obligations are, hey, I'm going for a week, so I'm taking two weeks to do that. And you're gonna take a couple of days to get there and understand the trip. Because here's a realistic, if you're driving like what Clover's saying, Let's say you're driving from anywhere in the country that takes some real time. You're going to get there and you're going to, unless you've driven to Vegas a bunch of times, you're going to have to experience that trip. Now, there might be mountains, there might be a, a town, there might be something of interest that you want to see and you're going to discover that along the way. Now, you know, you can add that to your trip back. So go in there. Sure, you're not going to necessarily fart around getting there unless you really want to. But you can schedule to fart around on the way back and you're reconning. You're getting all your intel on the trip itself the route on your way there so keep your eyes open and pay attention to what's True. going on kind of plan your trip back and then if you comfortably spend your time on the way back decompressing when clover talks about having three people in a vehicle for 24 hours that is an opportunity that you will not have very often in your life unless you become a professional youtuber and can collaborate with other people in a big way but think about having three people who are competent and able and interested and just either are going to shot show or coming back from shot show creating videos. I can tell you from experience, the eight hour drive between Tucson and, and shot uh, Vegas, when I've got a, a crew of people who are chomping at the bit to go experience SHOT Show in 2009 and 10, when they first moved over there, there was a competition among content creators to put content out and to get their content up on the internet first. And we were at the edge that we, and I would say we created it, but we certainly fostered it and encouraged it. And we were kicking ass on it, hundreds and hundreds of videos. I didn't do that by myself. I did that with seven dudes. So we go, well, and chicks. So we bring people to SHOT Show. They're chomping at the bit. So we created content. There's a whole section of book reviews that you'll find that are us driving in the car doing book reviews on the way to Vegas. We must have got 20 book reviews in that eight hours. That was just because we wanted, we, I just decided to drag a bunch of books with us and do book reviews because of the Amazon links, right? So we created, I mean, it's not like I'm rich from it, but if I had capitalized on that, we might actually have a residual income from that eight hours still to this day because people are still going to buy books right we we're talking about all the books we liked and the books that we thought were cool uh if you're doing it on i mean imagine all the stuff you could do in the time you can you can all just sit in the car and experience what it's like to travel together 
or you can sit in a car, one person on a laptop, one person on a live stream, one person driving and experience what it's like to create that kind of audience. And I've experienced what it's like to create that kind of audience and it's pretty freaking awesome. Um, let me go fill some bots and let Clover talk about that event. I think I already got the bots, but um, yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's kind of where I was going to go. I was going to say, okay, we maybe we've covered the you know the travel there, um, you know, this far in so far, and that's a great point when you talk about the collaboration efforts, the debriefing, the you know, being with my, like-minded people that. Uh, you know, are going to the excited to go to the same thing, you know, talking about the trip there as well as, you know, really jazzed and pumped with the experience coming back. Um, there's opportunity. There's also opportunity and it's a good segue maybe to, you know, switch into lodging a little bit because, you know, when we talk about saving money there, you know, splitting costs with other people and, and collaboration there uh, is definitely a thing and offers that same type situation but it's on a day-to-day -day update type um scenario or whatever as opposed to complete after action so you know that's one of them things where you may all have your own separate things to do but then you know in the morning you know, when you're getting ready or, you know, in the evening as you're winding down, you know, and you're there at whatever the lodging uh, place may be, you've got that opportunity to discuss the events of the day. And discussing the events of the day may lead you to change up strategies, tactics, may add things or remove things from your to-do list, that sort of thing, for the following day. Right. So a much more valuable situation, in my opinion. Uh, well, I'm not going to say it's a more valuable situation. It's definitely a different potentially situation. Potentially more. Yeah, potentially a more valuable because, you know, you would not have that experience otherwise if you did not have that debrief the night before, you know, shot the next day where you could employ said tactic or strategy or whatever it was. So, um, you know, there's definitely there's definitely value in that. And, and so that's where we get kind of come back to this idea that it's not it's not just about the the money it is don't get me wrong i mean if, if it's x number of dollars to make the trip and you don't have x number of dollars you know it's like yeah i get it it's it's about the money so it's definitely a component it's not just about the money um not just about the money and not just about the time but i totally get what you're saying but it's also about the experience and when we talk about return on investment right what is going to up and increase those chances that you're going to get a better return. And one of the things is the communication, the collaboration, that sort of thing with, with other people. Um, I just think this is totally an, an opinion, right? No blind study, scientific studies have been made that those creators, those people that go to shot, um, whether they travel as a group travel as a group and whether they travel as a group, whether they stay as a group or whether they travel and stay as a group, you know, I've got to believe that the return on investment, the ROI with shot, regardless of in what capacity they go, it's got to be higher with those people. Right. So again, we get Wait, back to this to idea. Gotta it's got to be higher. higher it's got to be higher in those situations. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so if that's the case and in budget. other words, if like you could Star Trek beam to Shot Show, do your content, and Star Trek beam home, it's going to be a better experience if you have to travel and get there and meet other people and deal with everything and then get home. Just well, or if you're traveling with experience. other, if you're traveling with other people and staying with other people, so yeah. I'm getting yeah. at right. No, yeah, exactly. Um, not just seeing people at the show and having those communications, but you're seeing people before and after the show. You're seeing uh, people. The camaraderie the is different, right? Like it's like being in a, True. In a situation yeah. with somebody that's multiple yeah. days and like if you are all yeah. going home to a conference and staying in your own hotels mm -hmm. okay and all right fine or if you're all just telecommuting and you're all just signing into zoom or whatever okay right. fine but if you're all in the same hotel and you're all in this you know sharing rooms in that hotel that's a dorm experience right that's a different 
bonding experience and awareness. Yeah. You know, that's the person that has to sleep with the eye shades on, or that's mm -hmm. the person that, you know, insists on having the first shower of the day. It doesn't mean nothing. It yeah. just gives you more awareness of each other, right? Yep. You know, and the whole point, again, I go back to, you know, the, the money is a thing. I mean, we can't go off over that, right? And so if you're looking for a better return on that money, then thinking about those ways not only can save you money in the short by, you know, split it, potentially splitting the cost of travel and lodging and things like that, but, you know, can also increase the return on the back end, which it, it's not saving you money up front, but it's it's bringing more return on the money you spent, right? It's getting you more value for that that budget. Least, that money it's hard to say more that. because what if you can't deal with it or you're not interested in it? It's it's additional or it's it can be enhanced, but definitely more of it. But well, I said that. potentially. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Not, the potential yeah. is important. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're just offering advice on our experiences. I'm sure there's people that money isn't the issue for them. It's something else. And they're approaching shot a whole different way. And I haven't approached it in a zillion different ways. I've approached it 18 times now, but, you know, pretty consistently from a content creator and more from just somebody who's interested in the show, honestly, than you know, it's, I was started out just being interested in the show. There was no ability to, there was no one to show content to, even if I could, you know, do content. And I'm not the kind of person who's like a, a robot brain that can keep track of every gun that's out there. I like the guns I like, which is a very small slice of the pie. And I'm totally able, able to not pay attention to all the other stuff out there. Some people aren't good at that, right? Like it's tough to not right. to be in a place that big and not be able to be comfortable if you like to know more about it. Anyhow, um, Again, so there's a challenge out there if you're listening to this. Unlike a lot of the other sh uh, channels that are doing a weekly focus on SHOT Show and as a content creator going to SHOT Show or as a manufacturer, what it's like to the experience of a content creator going to SHOT Show. Uh, this show, our version of this series is going to suggest that uh, if you're out there listening, think about uh, what part of the country you're in. Let us know like the city or state. And then like Smeggy just did. Thanks for that. For him, it's going to be travel, 300 bucks, lodging, 350 Uber is 150 food is 300 So he's thinking about it, 1100 for a full week with the room, uh, and then he can fiddle with that. And then he's also had put in here somewhere as another comparison that it was about, where did it go? No, oh, flights are about 300 and he figures it would be about 300 if he drove. So that gives us an idea. He's in the San Francisco area, so pretty close to Vegas, and pretty similar depending on which way he decides to go. But with that in mind, so feel free if you're listening and you want to take the challenge, come up with that. You don't have to be super specific. You can go to like a Travelocity type of site or something. Or if you've already done some stuff, just tell us some, you know, some round numbers. But that gives us an idea of what prices are like. So a thousand bucks from San Francisco couldn't be any closer. I imagine it must be something. I don't know where Clover is at on that. But if we look at that also, we can look at, we kind of talked about travel a lot here. Travel is a big part. Lodging, obviously well, another big part, and that fluctuates. You've got getting around Vegas and then food. There's also another thing there. We're going to say like memberships, um, costs, like drinks, or just, you know, the, the inconsequentials, whatever the other part is. Smeggy's talking about if he didn't like really do too much. So I'm going to say another couple of hundred bucks worth of just being able to do stuff comfortably and not have to worry about an entrance fee or a, an unexpected extra Uber or something like that. Right. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean that, you know, 1100 and, and talking about where he, you know, as close as Maggie is, um, maybe you know, a my wife and I, my year. wife and I can bootstrap, you know, like a $1,500 trip for the entire week i mean you're talking about 10 days worth of travel or something like that for about two people for, for the week and so that for two people for 1500 compared to one people and a longer probably frame of time just simply because of travel alone um or 1500 compared to you know what smeggy's talking about for 1100 you know you gotta that's where first of all it shows that that time is money and money is time so it definitely you gotta factor that in um, but it also shows how different parts of the country are different and, you know, people may or may not be set up. We're set up in a way, as I talked about earlier, where the vehicle we have is conducive to 
cheap long trips because of the gas mileage it gets where other people may not all they do is drive down the road and go to work so if their vehicle gets 12 miles of the gallon who cares because you know that's all they drive daily right and so big difference between 12 and 40 miles to the gallon um and then also you got to figure where you live and the, and the cost of fuel you know where smeggy lives fuel is no doubt considerably more expensive than fuel here and and not just fuel here but pretty much fuel from here to there and back. Yeah, you're um, driving the pipeline, so you're about the right. cheapest prices in the country. Right. He's driving California the entire time, so nowhere it, he stops is going to be cheap. Yeah, it definitely goes up. You know, the closer we get to to Vegas and whatever, you know, we definitely see rise on fuel prices along the way. But you know, that three hundred bucks, what are talking about him to to go? I mean, you know, our whole our whole trip there and back, I would be surprised if it was. You know, and, and we don't know what fuel prices are going to be in the next month or two. Let's be honest. But, you know, at, uh, at at current rates and looking at that, you know, I would be surprised if our our entire fuel bill there and back was that much. Because I think in twenty one, uh, I think it was about two hundred bucks <laughs> there and back for us. Okay, so. You got flights or travel to the state, the place. You've got your lodging when you get there, and you got your food. I'm going to say inconsequentials, fees, and that kind of stuff. But then I'm going to add cost of gear because unless you're decked out and you got nothing to worry about, you're probably going to have to purchase some stuff to get there. So don't forget about that because you're going to get all this stuff budgeted out and then go. God damn, I'm spending a thousand bucks to go do this one thing. I might as well get a good camera. And now, what are you throwing another thousand bucks on there? So maybe not for this year, but you know, keep in mind that you know there's that well, level too. Maybe you can borrow something. You are working with other people. Hey, can they, you know, you've got three cameras? Can you bring one and I'll use it during shot? And then you get experience with a new piece of gear. Hey, you got eight microphones. Can I borrow one that you don't use anymore and get experience on a piece right. of gear? Do reviews of those gears. If you're going to be in a vehicle for eight hours and you haven't reviewed all your gear. At all the rest stops and all the cool stuff with like you know new mexico driving by in the window behind you uh you know what i'm saying like who wouldn't want who's gonna be like oh i'm watching a review about a microphone but because he's in a car driving through new mexico i don't appreciate the review anymore you know like people are still going to watch that review and you're still going to get whatever affiliate link or you know just view on the other side if you're doing it on a non-gun channel literally just the views mean money i don't even think of people in the gun site think about that too often unless you're huge you're not making monies from views but talking about microphones and road trips and gas stations or along the way route 60 stick six uh either stuff that still exists or it's kind of falling apart you know the the skeletons of the old route 66 stuff uh the natural wonders of the world you know the grand canyons and the other features you're going to you might hit along the way those kind of channels just make money period like that's what youtube is all about we don't i don't think too many gun people think about that unless they've got other channels well yeah okay so we did get a bunch of people uh mill surface and from illinois 500 for flights lodging it's free i don't know how he's doing that uh uber 100 food 300 so he's thinking just under a thousand that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I mean, the flight that flight seems high, but I mean, I don't know what flights out of Illinois, whatever. Who knows, right? Yeah, and then plus in Illinois, you could book over to like St. Louis, maybe, or somewhere else and get a flight different. I don't know. Well, you've got. You know, keep, keep in mind when we were talking about you were talking kind of about incidentals. So, you know, you've always got other things when you're talking about gear, like oh, I left something at home right or you know oh crap i lost this where's it at or oh this quit working maybe you're talking about a battery backup maybe you're talking about something like that and you have to you know run to a store preferably off the strip you know big box store or whatever you know pick something up i mean so you know during that week you're almost assuredly going to spend 50 to 100 bucks on some type of incidental thing or or things i mean without a doubt uh, there's going to be a minimum of that. So um, that's one thing that I, I always do is almost, almost always take a hundred bucks. And I don't want to say I stick it in the bottom of my shoe, but you know, uh, and I don't take it in large bills either. 
uh, I don't take like a hundred dollar bill, but you know, like five twenties or whatever. Um, and I'll stick that somewhere. Um, and like that's reserved, like, you know, because I know that something's going to happen. I know something's going to come up, you know, Oh, I, you know, left a certain shirt that I need or you know, whatever the case may be, you know, um, and I've got to go and I've got to go do that. And so that's the way I, I treat some incidental money. And it's out of sight, out of mind in a way. Like if, it, if, it, if something happens and it's like, Oh crap, I've got to run and get this. Well, that sparks my memory to go, Oh yeah, you got that, that money tucked away here, you know, and this, yeah, but don't bounce right to it. It's, are you talking emergency or extra? Just like, uh, margin money or whatever that would be called because like, well it's, it's like yeah, for me it's separate for me it's like you need you need a piece of gear you need a you know uh like i said a, a piece of clothing i mean there, there's there's something you need it's not i don't guess it's mission critical it's not emergency is in you know life or death or the trip is done without it type thing but it's like man i you know i really need xyz whatever it might be and it's going to make things more convenient and easier and and whatever the case may you know that case may be um yeah I mean, i'm not talking about like medical emergency type life or death stuff at all and that's why i say i take that and you know i'll usually stick a little bit back because of that i think we just got our first comment from twitch ever so welcome really? to digs nice. all right so um so we broadcast this on YouTube, but then I always simulcast it over to Twitch, another platform that mostly is gamers, I think. And uh, thanks for the comment. Um, totally threw me. So we we're talking about the budget and dang, I think I had something there and then I just totally uh, glitched it there. Um, oh, okay. Here's what I was going to say. So unless somebody else wants to throw out there, because, um, you know, people that are traveling from further, obviously prices are going to go up. People that might be doing something different, prices are going to go up. Melser also said, is this the one? Spend in another, or I'm taking another grand for spending on other items, such as the antique show, which is the weekend after, or maybe going to a machine gun place to shoot rental machine guns. And that's the kind of thing. It was a great point because that's, I guess I was thinking of that kind of stuff, but wasn't uh, getting it out. There's that kind of stuff. The things that, you know, might be adjacent to shot or whatever that if you're already in Vegas, you can take you know, advantage of do. So let's say you're, you're going to take another thousand dollars and you're talking at least at this point, unless somebody else throws us some other numbers, we're talking a thousand dollars to get to shot show a thousand dollars. How many months are there? There's 12 of them. So if you chop that up, isn't that like $100 a month? Oh, wait, that would be $1,200. So $100 a month. Uh, do you got a gun shop? Do you got a manufacturer? Do you got somebody in your area that you've worked with? Maybe somebody on the other side of the country that you worked with. Maybe you're somebody who is out there and you're thinking, how can I be the most effective in my advertising? $100 a month. We talked about budgeting to get to SHOT Show. $100 a month is SHOT Show for most people. Now, what if you had two, sh two gun shops? What if you had a gun shop and some other thing like a gun show promoter? Uh-oh, hold on. I got a real-life thing happening. Hold on. Kind of. I found him walking down the street over by the... Hold on. Kind of. I found him walking down the street one day and have been looking for his real people. Comma, I didn't think you would want him. Okay, so uh, I might have found a sucker to take this little puppy off of my hands. Um, yep. Okay, so what if you had two gun shops, a manufacturer and a gun shop? Now you've got two thousand dollars to go to. I'm sorry, twenty four hundred dollars budgeted to go to Shot Show. Oh man, that was super complicated. I have to talk to three gun shops to get one yes. Oh man, oh no. And now Shot Show isn't the same thing as it was a minute ago, was it? Um, some comments about uh, 
getting there together and stuff. Oh, here, here she fires. Flight travel from Florida, 400. Hotel, 1,200. Plus 12-minute drive from airport to hotel. Oh, you're really getting into it. So you got food in there then. And then, so that's more like closer to eight, no, closer to two just to be there, right? Even more than two just to be there. So that's a fluctuation. Yeah. Now, Florida has some of the largest recreational machine gun shooting with a constant supply of tourists. So yeah. $200 yeah. a month to to be part of a channel that's going to SHOT Show for their first year. You couldn't think of a bigger bargain, but um, that's well, something maybe to put into an overall strategy for a channel, right, for time. So I, I, I feel I feel like she fires pulled some triggers on some travel stuff before reaching out, collabing, doing some things, right? Um, and she, of course, can can respond to that or whatever out there in the in the live chat. Um, and so, you know, what I put was, I mean, she can definitely get her costs, especially on that hotel. I mean, that's ridiculous to pay that. I mean, you can definitely, definitely, definitely get some uh, a, a lot cheaper a lot cheaper cost than that. I mean, we're the way we're, we're doing it with the uh, condo or whatever. I mean, we're at like 300 a week for the entire week. So, um, that's a quarter of that cost. That cost. So, uh, it, um, you know, it's, it's something, this is why we, we talk about these that way you understand and you know, and it's why we talk about that support structure and that, you know the the circle of friends and everything else. It's it's so important to broaden that out. Is because when you're talking about situations like this, that's where you do that. You don't have to you don't have to shoulder that entire burden of you know lodging and travel and whatever else, right? Being able to get around in Vegas, you don't have to shoulder that all yourself. You can. There's people that do it. There's creators. There's gun shops. There's whatever that go and they're by themselves and they're on in their own little bubble. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's the way that you want to operate. But, um, you know, we do have a village and, you know, it's, um, you know, it makes a huge difference when you're able to, I don't want to say take advantage of the village, but be a part of it. Let's just say, right. At this point though, uh, she probably just saying the hotel's held, but it's not paid yet. Um, at this time, yeah, it's probably way too late to to work on splitting. Um, you know, we've talked about it before, but, you know, communications need to start happening amongst your inner circles and everything else. Communications need to start happening um, when in regards to SHOT Show by the summer of the previous year at the latest. And then reservations and things like that need to be nailed down and, and – uh, and done you know by you know october ish of the previous year um and then something that we always make clear i mean we are we've got a condo it is being split you know essentially five ways uh, really really i guess only four but you know we'll say we'll say five um but you know the thing is once we lock everything in, you know, when you're talking about a collaborative effort. And this is one thing that uh, it's just an agreement going in. Like if you bail, you're done. I mean, you still, you're still on the hook for your, your part. So, you know, if it's, if it's one of them situations where, you know, we all go in at, you know, 200 bucks a piece and, you know, everything is paid up and somebody ends up not going well they just lost 200 bucks you know um and that's that's a, a gamble sure but you know it's not fair to everybody else you know that somebody you know everything was planned for and everything else on that so um just to give you an idea like when you when you're talking with that inner circle when you're talking with various people you're trying to put something together or whatever um and you can tell real quick you got to be really careful uh, there's folks out there that i consider great friends uh, and colleagues and i would never even consider entering into any type of an agreement to share a room or 
or fuel or you know uh, a rental or anything else with them um, because I know how flaky they can be, right? And so that's where it also I think you've got to be be careful with the people that you enter into those agreements with to, you know, try to share costs and split costs and, and do things like that. You really want to know that those, they, they need to be, you know, friends is one thing. Like I get along with this person really well and blah, 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 blah. Well, that's great. Cause you're going to be spending, let's just say in a, in a setting where you're splitting a condo, you're going to be spending the entire week, at least at some point every single day with that person. So, you know, getting along with them is, is, and everything is, is certainly important. Um, but then when you get into the financials of the situations and things like that, you really need to know that, you know, with financials and the commitment aspect of it, um, you really need to hone that down and make sure that you're, you know, collabing, sharing, whatever with not people, just people that you like, but people that are like-minded, that operate the same way, that see things the same way, um, or in a similar way. I'm not going to say the same way. Exactly. Well, you don't have to way. necessarily be 100% consistent as long as you can deal with the fact that you're not consistent. Like if, if you've got a bunch of people that are sloppy and neat, if, as long as they don't care about each other, then that's yeah. fine. You know what I mean? But if it's a bunch of yeah. people that are sloppy and neat and they can't stand the other people, then it's bad news. Well, it's more of a fundamental thing, right? It's like I understand if something happened next week, if something happened next, you know, next month, and but it's like, oh, I can't, I can't go to shot. Well, you know what? I'm not screwing ghost and budget and rogue, you know, over and demanding I have my, you know, get my money back and whatever. It's like, that's my bad. That's my fault. Well, and on the other hand, if something I'll happened and it. you needed your money back, everybody's also going to be like, well, let's get him his money back and either find well, if it was a, or fight it. Yes. If it was a situation, but I would not request that. Right, so I would not you know, expect you're, you're too, that. We know what you mean, though. If they decided to do it, that's we're fine. Too close to have a, you know, let's not let's not tempt fate here. So, which is, but we get what you mean. I, I mean, yeah. I yeah, understand yeah, yeah. that. But yeah. here is what I want to throw in as a caveat. I've been going for eighteen years, and I haven't done any of that by myself ever. Joe's been with me except for last year. Every single year, just you know, it's just Joe, and then other people, uh, up to seven people, bring in the shot show. I've even had a Canadian at shot show, so. And then that's just our, that's just gun websites. And then, then we're almost always well. And for seventeen years, well, fifteen years or something, we were with a gun shop. You know, we're, we're with uh, Charles with his radio show. Uh, we're you know for many of those years, I was with the Arizona Citizens Defense League as their media guy. So I've had different roles there, and I've definitely been involved with different communities of people there. You know, the YouTube people is cool and everything, but y'all a tiny little piece of SHOT Show. And there's a lot more of SHOT Show going on that people stay in touch with and are aware of and that kind of stuff. And then military and other jobs that people have had. This is the industry. So there's we've talked about it before that people reps for the industry don't they're not they may be loyal to a brand, but that doesn't mean they work for that brand their whole career. So there's relationships and things that are happening at SHOT Show that are necessary. The reason that SHOT Show exists, if SHOT Show is simply as a superficial as the youtubers would suggest then it's just a a glamified uh catalog it's because they don't know what's going on at shot show the reason it exists is because multitudes of levels of relationships uh are uh what's the word like are made possible because of the week-long uh, you know effort or experience or whatever wow um, that's a that's an interesting insight that you just dropped and i don't know if you tend to do that or not was how the perception of SHOT Show is, is portrayed to everybody else dependent upon the way that that creator or whatever talks about it or covers it. How many, how, how much of the perception of SHOT Show by people outside looking in is tainted by those that never get in depth like we have on this series, right? That all they see from Shot Show is a, is the booth reviews from these people. Or oh the yeah, the only negative people. reviews are people that are overwhelmed, have their jaw open the whole time, and don't absorb anything. They're like a wet sponge getting a fire hose blasted on them. They just say, "Oh, it was, it hurt me." They don't think about all the water involved, and that they can only hold so much. But there's a lot more water in the world. They only know the water that they can hold. So they they can't they can't. 
yeah. that relate to other people, the amount yeah. of water that's involved. They can't relate their portion of it because they are the center of their universes. And it is frustrating. I don't care too much because, you know, I don't have to, SHOT Shows doesn't, doesn't need to be championed. But yeah, it's frustrating. It's, it's kind of sad for the people that watch the observers with bad attitudes who don't get what they think they deserve from SHOT Show easily enough. And those observers will you know, have an opinion of SHOT Show based on greedy exploiters, basically. So anyway, um, what I was kind of getting at, so I appreciate that, but yeah, I was kind of getting off in a tangent there. Well, it's kind of like the difference. It's kind of like the difference between, you know, a sports ball game and you having somebody in the top row of section D that's off in some side or corner, right? And they're only really getting a good view of a certain area of the sports ball field, you know, whether you have the announcers in the booths that are overseeing everything, right? They've got a perfect bird's eye view of everything going on. And it's kind of like the difference of you're on a cell phone call with that buddy in the nosebleed section, and he's relaying the game to you as opposed to the announcers up there getting the, the full view of everything, right? The full experience. And so that's sort of what it's like with some of the creators that come back and it's like, you know, you, you, you hear things from them and their, their perspective and all, it's like, it's totally off. It's just like, it's not that it's necessarily wrong or anything. It's, it's just right like, from their angle. They just don't right. realize there's a hundred other angles. They just don't. Angles. Yeah. They're just not relaying all the other pieces, which make a difference, unfortunately. So I did tangent there, but what I was trying to head towards was, you know, for all this 18 years and experience in different things. And I'm also like my, I really cherish just being able to be the fly on the wall kind of watching because I don't have really too much skin in the game uh, with any organizations. Like I'll, I can be a fair witness or whatever to what's happening. Uh, Cause you know, well, and we appreciate our, our viewers that. are getting us to there, you know, so getting yeah. my eyeballs there. So anyway, what I was getting at is of all the, th dynamics or all the collaborations or of all the partnerships or of all the like loose affiliations that I've seen over the years. It's not the people that figured out that so and so farts all the time or that they need the hot shower. So they're going to get up at four in the morning and get the hot shower. Uh, you know, they're the ones that's going to we got the people that are going to sleep until 15 minutes late and then they're going to show up and act like nothing's wrong. You know, like you've got all these different things. The person that's never going to pay for their Uber for some reason, like even though they're one of three people in the Uber and they just never going to pay their three. You know, there's just the weird stuff like that. I've I've and maybe I'm not aware of every single personal thing out there, but I'm nosy and I actually I'm in a lot of conversations. So I know about stuff I don't want to know about sometimes. Um, but I think there's. And I'm trying to, as we've been talking, I've been trying to think if I'm if I'm just being contrary or not. But honestly, I think that solidifies relationships. Being in a in a real uh, tight quarters or whatever. And I'm I'm only experienced with the military. I don't do sports or other kind of things that people would get together. But I'm sure with sports, people travel as a team, go places, experience all kinds of different things as a team. So they get that bonding. That's you know, it's super, probably a band would be the same way. You know, they're going to go out as a group together in a bus and have, you know, be bonded in a whole different way. And I think that's, it can divide people, but more often it gives people such a common uh, experience that's core to them and meaningful to them. And it's providing for them that no matter what, they're still going to share that experience. And, and again, I'm in my experience, the people that have had the most fraction and the most division are because they barely touched. They've never sat down to eat. They've never considered having the same anything. Like they wouldn't collaborate on a video. They wouldn't. And, and sometimes it's frustrating when it's two valid people, but often you have to do that. You have to be able to, what's that word? Discriminate or rationalize, like, you know, play the numbers and figure out where your time is worth and that kind of stuff. But I think that's an element. So I just didn't want to discourage people from reaching out and saying, hey, let's share a hotel. It doesn't have to be your best friend. I don't think you're going to lose a best friend from being in a hotel with them. You might be like, oh, I'm not going to be in a hotel with that person anymore. It's still my best friend, but I don't want to have to sleep in a hotel room next to him, right? Or I'm going to get a hotel room with two bedrooms. It's a, you know, we haven't really talked about the actual layout, but you know, some of these houses and stuff, you guys are in your own bedrooms. That's a different experience than when we're all in the same room with two beds in the same room and one bathroom. You know that we're all living on top of each other i mean hell we've been in places where 
I've always got my Doberman. So it was me and the Doberman, Joe, all in this little Motel 6 room, and then Haas laying on the floor. So we had three dudes. Yeah. I don't know how Joe dealt with it because I've dealt with barracks and doing stuff and like, okay, I'm inside and I'm warm. Like, I'm okay. You know, I don't care if I got Haas's foot on me. Like, I don't care. Uh, you know, Joe never been in any kind of experience like that. So somehow he dealt with it. But, you know, that kind of stuff, that, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Is that sometimes it's, I'm not going to say it's worth going out of your way, but don't be discouraged yeah. that if you're going to go with people that that might well, end a relationship. I think in anything, it's going to foster relationships. Even if you're, you're talking about splitting an Airbnb, even if you're, if, even if you're having to share a bedroom, um, and we're talking about, you know, it, it, it can get a bit awkward when you talk about adding females into the mix and sharing bedrooms and stuff. Totally get that. Um, but, you know, if you're talking, you know, we're talking same gender or whatever here, um, you know, sharing it like this room has two twin beds in it. Right. Well, if you're talking about an Airbnb, that that's a little bit weird. Don't get me wrong. But if you're talking about an Airbnb that has a living room area, a kitchen area, it has other areas, right? It's like, so you're right. You're not locked into that room. A hotel room is essentially one big room. And so you're not locked into that. At least you can get away, right? Um, you know, homeboy may be, you know, sitting on the bed, you know, editing a video or whatever. And, you know, you can always go lay down on the couch or, you know, you can go sit at the table and do go something. Sit in the backyard or, or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because a lot of them at least have patio areas and things like that. Right. And so, it is Vegas. I mean, it might be a little cool for some people, but yeah. most of the people think it's warm. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's it provides a situation with like an Airbnb thing, uh, even though you may share a bedroom, it, it you know, it, it provides a situation where at least there can be some separation there, which is nice. Separation without literally going out in the hall or having to go sit in your vehicle or something. All right. I'm gonna, we're hitting the top of the hour, so I'm going to go hit up. I have 12 in here starred, but it turns out a bunch of these are just me starring my own stuff. So we'll just hit on some of these points, well, I guess. Get them. Yeah. Yeah. Let's so get Mill Serp said, our biggest cost this coming year is our flights. Prices went up. Mm -hmm. We kind of addressed that, I think, but um, mm -hmm. that is a, an, a thing. And I think the best way to deal with that is like what Clover said, budget it, you know, get it in your budget each month so that when it comes, you at least got a cushion, if not the whole thing paid. I think go, uh, snobs, did I star it? Snobs point about budgeting for more so that you're going to have leftover and at the worst case scenario use up that budget like you know so budget round up round up budget for the more and then get you know i mean i've never whenever i went with seven people and all those hotels when we went to florida and stuff to travel it's the reason i don't travel too much more because it costs thousands and thousands of dollars so i can't do that i don't have thousands and thousands of dollars you work with people you know you get you know hotel is made by you're going to create content Right. That content exists. That's property on the Internet. Every time somebody watches it, it's going to say brought to you by whatever. It's like having an ad on there or whatever. It's like having a, a poster on the wall. It's like uh, having the Coca-Cola in the movie. Right. And especially if you say in the middle of a video or something like thanks again to the gunshot that got us here. Thanks again to the whatever it is, the entity that made it possible for us to be experience all this. Right. You're creating all that has a link that has value. So you're allowed to be you know, interacting commerce and, and capitalism. Uh, so make it worth your while. You know, again, you, you can't be expected to do this as a hobby. If you are, you're going to be taken as a hobbyist. Trust me, the people that everybody watches are not paying a dime to be there. Uh, they're make, they, they will turn up their nose if they're not making enough to, you know, that they decide what they're going to do based on how much they're going to profit from it. So then you got cost collaboration and like we talked about that about six different ways as far as like sharing costs and like it keeps hands like get help, help people help out uh price of experience oh i think what i meant by that is oh man um what were we talking about back then because i was using that as a way to remind myself Nope, I'm not going to remember, I guess. So it was too vague on that one. Uh, so then we talked about the basics with everybody's participation in the challenge there as far as costs and uh, so you can get an idea of their uh, overall cost to be there. 
What about the extras, luxury, and the unnecessary? So let's start with unnecessary. Are there any things you can think of that are completely unnecessary costs that you've seen people? Would it be a rental car at this point? I mean, it's if it's close, it's close if it's not unnecessary. But yes, unless right. you have a real reason to have a rental car, I think that's almost unnecessary at this point. Mm. Maybe um, a fancy hotel, like you can definitely get budget hotels. Like being on the strip is. I mean, if you save a hundred dollars a night at the hotel and it costs you twenty dollars to Uber over, that's eighty dollars saved, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Eating at the place, maybe the unnecessary would be like budgeting in food there, like eat on the way over oh, to the yeah. show. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. After, yeah, yeah. Uh, buying definitely. anything? Is there anything that you could think of people buying? Like, I mean, I guess cameras. I guess at this late in this game, I would not buy a camera and go to shot. Go to shot with whatever equipment you own because you're going to be fiddling yep. with it at a time when you're trying to experience too much other stuff. So yep. I would think that unnecessary would be like buying a fancy camera. I always talk about in 2009. We bought a high def video camera to go to uh, Florida, which I'm glad we did because it was a great experience. But we were also trying to learn how to do video, learn how to do HD video, learn how to edit and remove the HD video from the cards and on computers that couldn't do that. Right. So we were, had so many learning curves that we had never experienced, like the large files, in other words, and moving those around and how much time it took a, 19, a 2009 computer to move. A high def video file when all we're used to is kind of medium sized we were never taking high def pictures other people took the high def pictures um the luxuries what kind of luxury like if you had the money what would be the first thing you'd buy or the thing that would make life easier time i'm saying time more time on the back end for sure on your way home and then time on the front yeah, luxury. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, any particular thing. I mean, it, it would be the the luxury. Person, I guess would be the money. Luxury of bringing a spouse or another person that can just make life easier while you're there. Yeah, luxury would be being able to fund the trip for somebody else that I can use as a gopher, right? Pack mule. I mean, various things. I mean, at the same time that they're getting to go and experience the show, so that could help me. Uh, and then at the same time, you know. It would be a thing for them. Um, so so that definitely being able, stay, being able on, to stay, being able to stay. Let me just say, going back to that, if it costs a thousand bucks to get there, if a second person is coming, it's going to be less because they're shared costs. So right. may, maybe it's only 700 to get that spouse or that other person there that makes life easier for a content creator. So if you're a gun shop, you're a manufacturer, you're somebody that is looking to advertise a hundred dollars a month to a content creator would be the difference between going and now going with you know the extra help and then if you bring a spouse that's that's diff it's not a vacation but it's like hey i'm not just going here to goof off like go with me see what work i do let's experience shot i mean you've experienced this both ways right is it better with the spouse versus doing something alone coming home and then being like guess what happened on my vacation let me tell you about what happened on my vacation slash work vacation slash vacation like there's way more stories if you go with the spouse <laughs> for sure well, anyway it's um, to to it say, depends like, on the spouse like it, for people. it depends on the spouse i mean you know for I sure mean, the relationship it might be best friend it might be channel partner it might be bringing your your dog you know some people don't want to go because they can't bring their dog but boom now they got some extra help you know their patreon boosts up because people think about it and now boom they're bringing their dog Right. Or whatever it might be, you know, the, the maybe it's the kid, you know, I wanted to go, but I like spending time with my kid. All right. Well, now my kid's going with me, even if they don't care about shot. And I'm talking like a kid that isn't whatever, too young for shot show. Right. But, uh, you know, even if they're not interested in it, you know, we got to go to the tennis store or whatever it is, or the M&M store or something in Vegas. Right. Um, extras and luxury. So, again, and if everybody has any questions or things about these, you know, we're not on a script here we're just kind of winging it so and we're definitely down for tangents uh smeggy's not, what is the next one an arb is like 20 200 a night for a house you can split it 50 bucks a night per person so i don't know what kind of cost your guys is at but we were oh. uh we were less than that we were about 100 
fifty probably a night, one hundred and seventy. And you can you can rent condos, you can rent apartments, you can rent back houses like behind another person's house. You can rent rooms in a house. I think somebody's done that before. You can rent entire houses, and then you can rent many mansions and probably bigger estates and stuff. So oh, yeah. I've actually experienced all of not myself, but I've hung out with people that have done all of those different things. And then I do it, you know, I bring my van, I sleep in the van. If you had a camper, Bob brought his camper. Literally, there's camp, there's campgrounds in Vegas. Like Vegas right. is there for everybody. And uh, not too far from the strip, Bob had his giant Canadian camper, fifth wheel camper. I and, don't know uh, anybody who's in buffets every night. I don't know anybody who's done it, but I certainly know people that have contemplated talking about camping that have contemplated bringing literally bringing their tents, their big, nice tents and camping gear, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, you can technically do it at like Circus Circus has an RV, and I'm pretty sure you can tent there, but um, it's cold. So, I mean, it can be nice, and if you're from like the north, maybe it's warm, but it isn't. It is still December. It is still January. But yeah, I hear you. And yeah, that's an option. Like, why not? Um, then Snob said my round my round trip nonstop southwest from Tulsa is 300, and that's. I don't remember if we're, that exactly when we were talking about it, but there's people that won't fly on certain airlines. So that's where, when we were talking about airfares, I don't fly hardly ever. I have flown, but I don't fly anywhere near regularly or anything. And there's people that do fly will have preferences and that can create, you know, there's no way you're going to, if you're a, create a threshold at some level where I'm not going to fly on these airlines, then you may never get prices like other people are getting, right? Because those cheap prices are like cheap hotels. You don't bring luggage and that kind of stuff, right? It's you don't get an assigned seat. There's just things that people are not going to do if they travel a lot. And then you've got people on the other end of that spectrum that travel a lot and they've got miles. They're probably not listening to this show because they're not worried about it. But you can get miles. I don't know if you can transfer miles. Like somebody who does travel a lot can transfer miles to you. Is that a thing? Well, oh, you got me. I don't know. I don't. Well, get if it is, then enough. again, if you're trying to help a content creator and. I mean, I've known pilots and people that get so many miles that they don't know what to do with them. And they're like, hey, you want a bunch of miles? And I'm like, no, I don't fly. And they're like, well, if you ever wanted to fly, I got all these miles for you. And uh, I appreciate it, but I just don't fly that often. But, you know, if you've got if you're in a situation like that or you just travel a lot, whatever, um, again, getting somebody there, taking that price off of their that weight off of their shoulder, that might get them that camera or that extra day or two. Um, I keep assuming that people are listening to this that are actually hoping to get people to SHOT Show or understanding that as little as $100 a month can create a massive return on your investment for this show. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to what $100 a month would allow a content creator who gets who succeeds at SHOT Show, what's that content creator going to do? Yep. Put up, close up shop and quit doing it? Or are they going to flourish and you've just uh, helped blossom a new content creator that might be the ones that take over from the current nothing we've got right now right okay so she fire says i have uh, an idea of how i want to move about but expect to use this first year for observation learning connecting then recalibrate for next time it's an awful lot of money you're spending some decent scratch on this so i hear you and i'm glad about that but also dig in it's, it's not too much that you can't just take massive scoops while you're doing it but that's is a massive as a goal i think that's super strong like that's the way to do it and especially if you're in this to win, you know, you're in this for the game, then yeah, this is your first year. And think of it as your first experience when you're new and you have done things over and over. You've, you've begun new things once or twice in your life before. You think, oh, if I could go back and do that over, well, this is your, you don't have to do it over. You're doing it for your first time and you got all that. And you've got other people like Clover said, there's a lot of uh, people out here that are on your side, right? Right. Um, what's the bottom line for SHOT Show content? Oh, I know I was trying to remind myself of something with this one. What, what is your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? No, I think I had more of the bottom line, like cost-wise. And um, yeah, but let's take it into another way to, because I have no idea what I was trying to tell myself there. Um, usually I try not to interrupt if you're in the middle of something. Unless it's, I had to do interrupt, obviously. But if it's, uh, you know, something I can leave myself a note. And then if it goes off on a tangent, I just forget what the hell I was leaving myself a breadcrumb for. Right. But um, 
uh, let's go backwards. We know that, uh, you know, we're talking a thousand to 2000 a, a, a person to get to SHOT Show and to be there. And if you figure you're going to you have four days because you're going to be, you know, for that thousand dollars, isn't somebody who's there for a day or two. You've got the same travel cost, but everything else goes down. So it might be not significantly lower, but lower if you're only there for a couple of days. But this is why going there for a couple of days is the sucker bet. It's incrementally nothing more to be there for the full week than to be there for two days, right? right. Nothing yeah. more. So you're already going to be there. Here's the big cost. If you're going to be there for two days, one day, no matter what, I have to spend a day figuring out what's up. Now, I, after 18 years, can wail on day one more than anybody because I can't. I don't care. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I took 18 years to be able to do that. Everybody else, and I'm still, like, walking around, looking around. I, I don't just automatically know what SHOT Show is. So... You got one day of what the hell, and then you've got a day of trying to capitalize on whatever you figured out, and then you're going home, and you spend all that money to have one day. Uh, you do that with four days. Now you've got one day of what the hell, one day of, oh, I'm taking everything I can get, one day of like, okay, that didn't work, so let me be realistic about this, and then one day to clean up. Hopefully, you're giving yourself a day to go to the Antiques Gun Show after. Yeah. All the coolest people in, every, in, in the industry hang out at the gun show after, just saying. So... Um, Right, going for incrementally less time or cost for that extra time, and it might be it's incrementally less to be yeah. there. But you're right, for like a job or like a relationship or something, it might stress out a relationship with somebody who's got to be yeah. at a school team or something. So that part, okay, I got you. But if you're literally just nickel and dime in it, then I tell you what, go with the extra time because the content you're going to be able to gather and create is immensely more. It's multiple, multiple times more. And you're going to get more comfortable with it. And that's your experience. So you're going there for experience. You're going there to become experienced. You're going there to, to experience the environment, but you're going there to get better at your craft, right? And you can't get a better place to get better at your craft than shot. It is ultimate. So go in there and experience it, dipping your toe in the Olympic pool and then going home and saying, oh yeah, I drove all the way to wherever, you know, I got myself to Rio de Janeiro and I stuck my finger in the pool. And then I drove home to tell you about it. That's a little different than, yeah, I went there and, you know, we swam and I learned a little bit. And next year I'm going to be able to, you know what I'm saying? So um, what's the bottom line? You're going to be there. You're going to get some amount of content. So hopefully we're talking about people that are going to be there for three days. So I just went through the scenario. Day one, write it off. Day two, all right, you're going to try to get everything. Day three, you're going to get the rest of everything you tried. And then day four, you're going to like just kind of walk around stupid. You're going to be super tired. So you've got one day of as much content as you can get, a second day of trying to do good at it. Thursday will be your best day. And then Friday, right? So what are we realistically talking? Five videos the first day, 10 videos the first day, five videos yeah, the, the, the day, dynamic. Videos the day, five videos the last day. So maybe 25 videos, maybe 15 videos from SHOT Show divided by that $1,000. So let's say 10 to $20, 10 to 20 videos somewhere there realistically. You know, so that's how much you're paying for those videos. That's how much those videos are going to cost that content creator. That's how much they're going to cost you. So when you're sitting around SHOT Show and you're taking pictures of everything you can possibly see, you got 20 videos and those things cost you 300 bucks or whatever. What would it be? Let's do the real math. A 10 of them at a thousand bucks would cost you a hundred bucks a video. So you're, you're charging yourself a hundred bucks. It's budgeting you a hundred bucks to see, to, you know, each thing. So if you're going to walk up to a booth that's got a video of a, little speck of dirt that costs 50 cents, or you're going to walk up to a booth that's got a $10,000 bag with, uh, you know, an affiliate return of two, $300 every time somebody buys one. What's the bottom line for SHOT Show? Right. You're going yeah. there to fart off, or you're going there to take 20 videos, 10 strategic, 10 tactical, and a couple of, I'm going to get good at this. Like I need to figure out how to do a, a booth review with something I'm not comfortable about. I need to know how to approach a celebrity. I need to know how to do audio in a, in a crowded room. So it costs you a hundred bucks to get these videos, but you come out with the ability to do this. Why, you know, this I've watched that show videos for years. You know, it sucks the audio, you know, it sucks the lighting, you know, it sucks the people they choose to talk to. So what's the bottom line? What are you going to get out of shot show? What's your, what's your, part of SHOT Show? What do you bring into the world? What's your, what do you show in the industry that you're valuable for? What 10 things, 20 things can you do at SHOT Show that take you 10 or 20 steps closer to what you really want to do with your channel? 
So I think that's what I kind of had in mind with the bottom line. There's a couple of different ways to approach that. If you want to talk about this for real for your channel, we'll both do channel consulting for money. Like you can pay us and we'll give you our experiences individually or we'll talk to you together in an off-air chat. If you're a Second Amendment advocate, I'll do that for free. And I don't mean some of you likes to talk about guns, but I'm saying if you create content with a focus on our what our Second Amendment protects and, and that, we'll talk for nothing. Just give me the time you want to chat and we'll chat about real life, how to get SHOT Show so that not just your project is paid for, but you're getting towards the direction. Those are 20 specific targeted steps to get you or videos to get you steps to wherever you want to be. So um, we'll serve duo. Talking about, oh, did you want to hit anything on that? We kind of wailed on some stuff there. No, I just real quick, um, when you were talking about that, it popped into my head two, two mistakes uh, that I, I see that are made. Uh, number one is not getting to shot show at the absolute quickest point you can get to shot show. Like, you know, instead of, you know, eh, well, you know, it's six months away. I'll wait till the next one, you know, dragging your feet. Like, don't do that. Get to shot show. Um, and then the second mistake is not going for the entire week. And I did make that mistake uh, the first time. I'll never do it again. Uh, I agree. So number one, get there, period. Number two, get there for the entire week. Um, everything else will line itself out <laughs> once you get those things taken care of for the most part. Because if you're if you're adamant, competent enough, committed enough to make those things happen, right? I think you're committed enough to make to make SHOT Show work for you. Uh, the Milserp is Milserp from Illinois is saying, I'm talking, uh, oh, I'm taking another thousand for spending on other items such as the antique arm show or maybe going to a machine gun rental. Um, we talked about this earlier, but I wanted to hit on this again. Um, you don't have to pay to go to a machine gun place. You're a content creator for crying out loud. And they are desperately in competition. They're in desperate. They're in, they're desperately in need of awareness because they're in competition with like at least 12 other machine gun rental places. It's kind of last minute at this point, but there's, let's say, well, there's, there's the, the, the gun store. There's the other one that's going out on the way to, to, I'm doing them in order that they were created. The one that's on its way out to Pahrump, you've got uh, Battlefield Vegas, you got Machine Gun Vegas, you've got the Machine Gun Room or whatever it's called, you got 702, and I'm probably missing a couple. I know I'm missing a couple, but those are the five or whatever big ones one of them might be booked one of them might never be booked because they're not going to book during shot show they've been there too long right one of them will be have a private room so they can get booked but they can also have people shooting the whole time they're all different all i've definitely shot at all of them yes it's possible to shoot at all of them i didn't pay nothing for, for bullets or rental or nothing because they want advertisement so contact them and think of it as a challenge or something so don't pay for the machine gun shoots if you can help it you're also going to range day there's other range days. We've talked about that in other shows. So take that one out of your thousand dollars. Hopefully, uh, go into the. Have you been to this show that we're talking about? This uh, gun show. I can't remember if you've stayed and gone to it. No. Or no. Okay. So it's not the biggest show, but it's a unique show. So it's knives and an antique. So nothing really more modern than World War II would be probably the most modern, and you barely even see that many World War Twos. This is really cowboy guns and old guns and old 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 guns kind of stuff. But it's an interesting show. But there is other things to do in Vegas. And I just wanted to take a second to say, you know, and if you are, I'm worried about money all the time because I'm dumb and I just don't do my stuff. You know, I don't look at the getting rich part of the equation enough. Um, and I've taken some risks and paying for them now financially. But um, uh, a lot of people aren't in that situation and they are going as a vacation. So there are a lot of, we mentioned the machine gun rental places but there's so many cool gun shops in Vegas. Vegas is a cool place. There's Nellis, a big giant Air Force base. I forget what all they do there. One of the coolest, if not the coolest surplus store in the world, Hans Military Surplus is in North Vegas. There's so many things to do in Vegas that are unique and fun that, yeah, uh, we're concentrating on the poor, like cheap end of it. But there's nothing wrong with bringing some scratch, spending that extra time and decompressing and, and absorbing all of SHOT Show while you're having fun renting RV or four wheels, four wheelers out there, going to the Clark County range, which is one of the best. I think it's 
you know, hands down one of the best, coolest ranges on the planet uh, to just recreationally shoot whatever you want to shoot. It's a county range. Um, you've got the, you can rent Lamborghinis and stuff like that. Like there's just some fun things you can do. It is Vegas. So we're talking about the cheap end, but on the other side or just the side that's not as frugal, uh, there's some fun stuff to do. Can you imagine going to SHOT Show and then everybody renting supercars or whatever they're called and zooming all around in the deserts out there? Because when you get deserts, you don't get as many potholes and stuff. You don't get winters that kill the road so much. So it can be some fun driving as well. You know, if I was going to throw anything on that. Oh, yeah. Are you already in your doing other things? No. Nope. That can be cool, though. Uh, let's see. So then Millsurf also says we are using a family member's timeshare, and that's why it's inexpensive for lodging. Yeah, if you have uh, those options, you It's allow. full of timeshare. So if you know people that have timeshares, or just ask around. Family and people who are be appropriate to borrow something like that from. But if you're not familiar, timeshares are, I don't understand them at all, but people buy a monthly, yearly, whatever it is, room, set of rooms, block, whatever we're going to call it. Like they buy some time uh, in a giant hotel or in, in a series of you know related properties or something. And it's all different kinds of scenarios. But effectively, people buy this vacation hotel space every year. And sometimes they can use it, sometimes they can't. And some people are sitting around frustrated because they're not able to use it and they're paying for it. So sometimes they'll just give it to you depending on the relationship or give you, you know, if you can give them a chunk of their fees or something, you can get on a really nice place sometimes for really cheap. Timeshares are not always really far away either. Some of the best places on the strip are timeshares. Sometimes the hotels or the buildings, you'll look up the building and it's like 10 or 20 whatever stories. Three stories are a timeshare. Three stories are this hotel. Four stories are, you know, business or something. Like the, there's different things going on in those buildings. Have you ever used timeshare? No, I never have. I think not, no, not knowingly anyway. Well, that's true. You might get one and be somehow subletting it or something. I think um, between all the people we know at timeshares, we've done out of the 18 years something like six timeshares or something, and they're usually pretty nice. And if it works out as, again, maybe you're a gun shop owner or a manufacturer or, you know, in the industry and you've got a timeshare sitting around eating you every year. Well, now throw it at a content creator for SHOT Show. Brilliant. Um, she fires had mentioned that she had not yet paid for that hotel. So hopefully that helps out with that. Well, that's a um, great point to make with folks that are, you know, the cost and they're worried about the budget is that depending on your lodging options and stuff like that, not all of them require the uh, payment at the time of uh, reservation so that that does give you time to you know work that out and and whatever and you know when you're talking about vrbo or airbnb uh, some of those offer a payment option even to where you can you know half is due now or a third is due now and then a little bit's due later on and later on so there are there are options to split that up if you're if you're looking for that sort of thing um daniel is saying i think a lot of the same people go to imts it's more non-small arms though which one's imts something trade show it's the machinery or whatever industrial machinery trade show maybe i'm typing it in at first, I was thinking it was one of the internationals, the International Manufacturing Technology Show, the largest and longest running trade show in the Western Hemisphere. It's held every year at McCormick Palace in Chicago. What would you think of putting SHOT Show in Chicago? Have you ever been to McCormick? I've never been to McCormick, no. McCormick Place, it's not McCormick Palace. Um, it's just a giant thing. You think it's the only thing in Chicago, but it's... Uh, it's glass, at least from what I remember. It's a giant glass building, and it's, yeah. it's like a basement. Anyway, um, been to a couple of trade shows in it. I don't think it's big enough for Shot Show, but maybe it is. So, uh, if this is the international manufacturing, I would definitely go to it. If it's a bunch of like mills and lathes and interesting stuff, I would definitely go to it. I really like to go to the concrete one. The concrete one looks freaking awesome. Uh, it's like a what do you call it? A uh, trade show or an industry trade show for the concrete industry. 
So it's huge physically because all the machines are big, and then a lot of people go to it. And then, from what I understand, concrete dwarfs. Was it? No, they don't dwarf us. We dwarf them money wise and how much money we bring into the city, but they dwarf us in their physical size because yeah. all the equipment and stuff. Yeah, and that's why they get the big convention center. Now I don't know if they dwarf us on money, honestly. I mean, I don't remember. Well, what we looked at. I think we looked at it and we gonna, they we're bigger than them with the number of people that show up is all. Yeah. Uh, and he said it's a lot of the same people, just larger weapons, way bigger than Chacho. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong one then. Yeah, it's, yeah. He says it's all that plus missiles and tanks. So if you're talking about the in like if you think of like a movie where they're doing like one of the international uh, munitions shows or something, like I, there's things like there's modern marine, there's some military specific versions of the Chacho. So if, if we think of SHOT Show as, you remember how many booths is it? 2,000 booths, 2,600 booths, or am I pulling up the wrong number? Whatever the number of booths is at SHOT Show, that's the industry as far as the manufacturers, the distributors, the middlemen that are super necessary, otherwise this would never work. The gun shops, so there's gonna be like gun brokers and some larger gun shops that might even have a booth, but then materials might have a booth. Uh, somebody that's just creating precursor materials for something else nylon or the camouflage you know those camouflage literally has boots cry precision has boots um you know like rain tree or whatever what is it whatever all the different camos like they're there represented those camos are entities right so when you think about all those things as segments um i've talked about the outdoor show so things like boots knives uh water hydration systems they'll take their booth and they'll go to an outdoor show for the camping industry or for the outdoor industry same thing with the military stuff if they break down their booth at shot show they're not just like putting that in the garage until next shot show they're typically bookings to the next show and sometimes that's like a, another shot show for a different hemisphere so there's like a europe shot show not from the same company but like the equivalent a big small arm show for recreational and military and police there's something like that for europe there's something like that for asia there's something like that for all the different continents i think and maybe a couple of more watch a couple of the international people and they'll they'll go to some of those some of the companies will go to some of them too like the big companies go to a lot of those but then you get the ones for like marines the army i don't know if navy has one i've never heard of one but you know there's uh what do they call it? like branch specific shows so some of the companies will say you know i want to cater to the marines for whatever reason our stuff so hardy or our stuff so strong or more than likely they were marines or they are marines so they're gonna you know make sure that they go sell their stuff to the Marine Corps. Well, the Marine Corps started doing a thing called Modern Marine a while back where they essentially just bring all those booths from SHOT Show that are appropriate and they set up something for the generals and the procurement officers and the different people in the roles of having to make decisions show up and evaluate. And that gives them essentially a range day, right? A, a, a version of SHOT Show that is no cameras, right? Different type of situation. So yeah, these other shows that exist have different roles and i've been to a couple of the military type things that I don't know if we're allowed to, it's not that they're secret it's just that because of the people who attend you're not taking pictures there are no pictures allowed i've been to some of those and that's the problem is they're interesting and it's neat but you know i don't care about pulling triggers i've pulled triggers on interesting guns that you know like the what's that the like a rocket launcher, not a rocket launcher, the uh, grenade launchers and stuff. You know, you don't hardly even get to shoot that stuff in a regular basic training or nothing. You know, unless your job is to shoot them, you're not shooting. So for that kind of stuff, it's neat if you really want to value the experience. But since you can't take pictures and those people are not there to do interviews or like they're not the people you would ever want to interview. Any, maybe the manufacturers, but like, you know, the other people aren't in roles that they're public relations or anything. So they're just sort of personal experience and maybe creating contacts. So then you have to get invited and have to have a reason to be there. You know, there's, you don't just show up to these kind of events either. So that's my take on that. It would be probably neat, but it's, I'm not that interested in all of the munitions and everything. I'm barely interested in planes. I almost am not interested at all in tanks and that kind of stuff. Uh, aside from maybe looking at like some kind of a radio truck or something like I, I let that go to somebody who really is interested in it. You got any interest in going to something like that? I'm assuming no. Yeah, not really. I'd probably watch a video or two on it just to understand the scale of it, where it fits in and everything, see what kind of booths are there. But 
is the specifics of it, or I'd leave that to somebody else. Um, Ghost is saying that Pendleton brings a bunch of companies every year for gear testing. He was invited but couldn't make it. The, um, I don't know which one he's talking about, but uh, at this point, they might actually be more camera friendly. All right, well, we're about 90 minutes, and I think we hit all the starred ones there. Um, yeah, we do. Millsurp said, our condo resort is four blocks from the expo, so Uber is going to be the way to go, especially four people are splitting the three-bedroom and going to split the Uber. Um, you know, just to, again, there's you, you can do what you're going to do, but if you have a rental, it's not like if you're already planning on the rental or that was your idea, like there's nothing wrong with the rental and what a rental does give you, and we've kind of shit on it before, but you, you can go back if you park somewhere close by or even not close by and you end up getting a bunch of stuff for whatever reason, you know, however it is or whatever it is, you have a vehicle to go book it to. If you're Ubering, you're definitely dependent on being able to put it into coat check or like stoning. There's nowhere to stow anything. There's no like hidden rooms. Like, no, there's no part of SHOT Show that you can just, I'm going to leave something here. There might be a booth or something that says, we'll hold on to it till the end of the day for you. But don't assume that those booths cost a lot of money and there's you know a crew of people and if they're all going around telling people they're going to stow people's stuff then you know what i mean so if you are a booth keep in mind that that's a good idea do it reasonably but don't assume as a content creator that every booth is just out there to hold your stuff for you i guess uh i'll just make a point there because as i was saying that i was thinking to myself about all the different circumstances if you see a booth that's got a big chunk of it not being used and you're carrying around or you have a potential to carry around something heavy and you know just it doesn't hurt to ask they might, the worst they're going to say is like no we don't feel like doing that because they might be the total opposite and go oh you need to put something heavy in our back room that we're not using yeah go for it well so, you know. also makes a difference if you've established a relationship in some capacity with that company already or whatever too well that could I, be the thing that helps i can think of relationship well you know? oh, i'm the guy that had that stuff in your back room oh that guy okay yeah that's true yeah. yeah i mean you don't know everything's different but again be be ready for whatever might happen mm -hmm. all right oh go see and yeah no cameras allowed so yeah they haven't changed anything um all right, so with that, I think we'll wrap this one up. We we talked about pricing. I think we kind of actually did quite a good job on this one because we don't really do more than just like a vague direction to head in. But we figured out that it's going to cost somewhere between a thousand and two thousand for most people to get there, and again, that's a real good um, way to kind of create a budget and to understand just how um, efficiently or how in many ways you could. Uh, divide that up to uh, make it easier or, uh, you know, plan for, I guess, next year if you're depending on where you're at in this thing. All right. Uh, so I think we were going to do, do you want to do, or what do you think? Should we talk to, have a panel with people that haven't gone first, me and you and people that haven't gone? Or should we have a panel of me and you and people that have gone to a bunch of them? Which would be a better one to have first? I think the first timers. Yeah, I think let's go first timers. Yeah. Okay, so anybody that wants to join in, um, what I'm going to do is schedule a show for this time next week, and we'll use that as a placeholder. If it turns out over the week that other people, you know, that can join in at this time, then we'll do that. We'll just invite the people into this room. If, however, people are able to listen now, but there's no way they can actually be part of a conversation at this time of the day, then we're pretty flexible. So we can, uh, you know, use this show next Tuesday for something else and then, you know, bounce it, the actual conversation to a later time in the day or something. But let's shoot for next Tuesday. Am I crazy? Is there like a holiday next Tuesday? I'm forgetting about nope. uh -uh. Christmas or something. So nope. um, next Tuesday is the 13th. If you're listening to this and you're interested in being in a conversation, we're not going to like, you know, give you put you on the spot or nothing. But if you have any questions or if you just want to chat about it, uh, wander around, you know, discussion about Shot Show, or if you have specific questions too. On the other hand, if you're not a new person who's going and you, but you have questions or you know, something to bring up, feel free to contribute or ask or 
suggest, right? So we can have a, a conversation about that. Right. Okay. So um, if you ever want, I can get you in. Well, where is it, I guess? But yeah, I appreciate the invite. I know Ghost would uh, probably be interested in that one too. But I don't know. I, I'm leaving it open. I like to travel. So if I can ever get to the point where I'm basically just paying off a pile of bills. Once I pay off them bills and I get back to where it's a normal situation again, then uh, I, I have all intention of traveling again. I, I, I'm a traveler. I like traveling. So, uh, oh, it's up in Chicago. I do need to go to the Chicago Art Institute for uh, the gun museum tour. So uh, I could be talked into going to Chicago. There's a, some kind of percent chance the Gun Rights Policy Conference will be in Chicago again. However, there's probably a 0% chance that it'll happen anywhere near the time of that show. But anyway, um, yeah, I wouldn't have any problem with going to uh, that show if I was out on the road or whatever. All right, well, that being said, thanks for the uh, conversation. Thanks, Clover, for taking some time to uh, continue to do this. Um, yeah, you bet. Right on, Chief Fire. So we were just kind of saying that next week uh, on Tuesday, I guess we're just saying that's the 12th, we're going to... Uh, do the discussion with people who have not yet been to shot uh, or there's a 13th we're going to plan on the 13th so we just need to know if this time of day is the best time or if we should plan something a little bit later in the day evening or something uh, so if anybody's interested in participating let us know and you know with the time that's good for you and if, if for some reason the 13th is a bad day like that isn't going to work for people that are new going to shot show let us know because we can easily just do the old timers first and or you know do something else and then do the show with the new folks on the 20th right all right with that thanks yeah. everybody for watching and listening oh why don't we talk about oh i forgot about the biggest thing we were going to talk about well the big thing i was going to talk to clover about today so i don't know if you were watching my mail call thing but thanks for the badges and stuff the badge and the yeah i guess both yeah. badges but from from uh wanamaker appreciate that and uh um I was listening to Charlie and what's his face, Mike Matt, from Meet the Pressers. Uh -huh. So those guys both do shows that interview people, and they do a show together where they bring people on for a second time that they have both individually interviewed. Mm -hmm. And it's an interesting show because they're going beyond the introductions, right? And laughing and joking around or whatever. And uh, I really like Matt his project because every time they bring somebody on their show they're on imdb because he's his show is on the internet movie database that means everybody who's on his show gets the opportunity to be put in the internet movie database so we have a bunch of second amendment advocates that are in the internet movie database now based on that show so he's doing awesome he's you know he's, he's in a direction that no one else has even thought about and he's just kicking ass on that Plus, it's an interesting show. He's a cop, I think, and the other guy, I haven't listened to that show, but it's an interesting premise for a show where they bring law enforcement in and talk about it. But the shows that I've listened to with Charlie are interesting because, you know, most of the time, Charlie's more of a, you know, here, I'm not necessarily new to the game, but I'm not trying to say I'm been there, done that. So he's just there to be like the catalyst for the conversation where Matt brings more experience and stuff and just a different you know life experience and they're both instructors so anyway their combined show is pretty cool and one of the things they do on that show is give away a cert training pistol you know what that is yeah what's a cert i don't know idea what it is but i i have a red one and it's some model with a red slide so that's a gun that has recoil or is it just a reset i think the cert the certs do they recoil don't they like they I have no idea. So they sent me one. I guess it's worth 450 bucks and it's new. So it's one of those things like uh, you win and then they send it, the cert place sends it to you. Or maybe it's a, I don't know. Whatever it, let me grab it. Since the whole point is to um, acknowledge the people that made it possible, right? It was sent to me by Next Level Training in Washington. And I don't know if that is CERT or if that is a company that's working with them or not. But anyhow, I don't need a CERT pistol. So what I was going to do is give it to you guys for the um, your deal going to Vegas with the stickers. 
um, with the caveat that you know Charlie and Matt get a big plug or some sort of a shout out for facilitating it, making it possible or whatever, if that's okay. And then either throw that in to make it a two thousand dollar deal, or I was thinking maybe make it a second place so that the, you have a next level or next tier, depending on how you can do what you want with it. Um, if you want, otherwise I'll just give away on a free patch Friday or something. Uh, yeah, we can. We might could work out a secondary prize thing. That could be neat. So you and Ghost figure out what you're going to do with it, and then I'll just – I haven't opened it enough, and all I did is take it out of the shipping box, and it's all sealed, right. and it's still good to go. It says it's a CERT 110F Pro, I think RG. I'm guessing that means red slide. There's yeah. a purple slide, so I didn't get the purple one. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know what it's worth, but it's, you know, it's something that I'm not going to need to open and fiddle with. And I don't do reviews of stuff, and I'm not going to use it. So, yeah, if it can benefit that, um, you guys figure out if you want it and what to do with it. And then why don't you tell us about the rest of the stickers, though, before we head out. Um, yeah, I mean, right now we uh, – I don't know how many is left. Uh, somewhere around half. Once the uh, 200 are gone, then uh, we will announce the – winner of that sweepstakes uh, $1,600 prize package goes through a link out there. I've thrown a link out there. Um, go through that. There's uh, 16, 17 prizes, 15, 16 or so uh, companies involved. Um, pretty, uh, pretty cool opportunity to keep in mind a few things with that. Um, you know, if you've bought, stickers previously keep in mind that you don't have to buy five uh at one time to get the extra entry so if you bought one or two and you want to add another you know three or whatever to get you to five to get the extra entry as long as there's stickers available you can do that um you know you're not limited to the the stickers you can pick up uh, we've had some people get as many as 10 and certainly appreciate them and of course if they've gotten 10 they've gotten two extra entries which is also cool uh and then we've had some folks that um you know have purchased the stickers but give their they gave their spots away they contacted us and said hey you know put so-and-so's name on the uh on the entries right uh which is pretty awesome so i won't i won't name drop any of those people but that's very generous of them not only in, in helping with our project but also you know in giving uh, somebody else out there an, uh, an unknown opportunity if one of those people win it's going to be going to be interesting because they did not <laughs> did not participate so um so yeah and then yeah ghost thanks for that ghost he says uh you can request a specific number if it's available yeah if you want uh one zero zero one through 200 if you want a specific number out of there um you can claim that number and we'll make sure you get that number on your sticker assuming it's not already taken we've got about a half a dozen at this point uh, that people have claimed specific numbers so uh, and i've highlighted those in my little database that way i know those are locked in but uh if they're not then uh yeah you can certainly are welcome to to pick your to pick your numbers so to speak with the uh with the stickers so again every sticker is an entry uh every five stickers get you an extra entry and uh yeah no uh no limits but uh there are 200 to, overall is limited to 200 so once they're gone they're gone right on. so uh ghost saying that next level is the one that makes that cert and cert stands for shot indicating resetting trigger so the issue with most striker fires is once you pull the trigger it requires the action of the cycle of the action to uh, or the movement of the cycle of the action to reset all the pieces you know push the springs back into place so there's been a couple of attempts to make drop in things to make a, a striker fire gun into a training gun a, a gun that can not have to have the gun cycle in order to get this the trigger to work again and they always include or they always require taking apart the gun putting in a different kind of trigger group or something and then putting it all back together and now you have something that looks like a gun 
because it is a gun. It just doesn't have a real trigger in it. And now it's all complicated because a bullet will fit in it, but nothing's going to fire probably, but maybe it does because maybe it's for lasers, like who knows. So it was always a bit of a proprietary mess. Uh, somewhere, I don't know when they created the certs. It seems like six years ago, five years ago. It seems like a while ago now. They created these guns that are just separate guns that instead of trying to take a regular real gun and modify it to be a training pistol, they'll just start from the ground up and make something that can do what is necessary. So from what I understand, it's not a Glock, it's not a Smith & Wesson, it's not a FN, right? It's just sort of a generic pistol shape, but similar, very similar. So it probably fits in holsters and stuff. So it has like some of the common denominator elements of most common factory pistols right now. And then it has a resetting trigger, which means it has a completely different mechanism inside that'll break each time, like if it's a, a what do you call it, a striker fire trigger, or maybe the first shot of a double action. Uh, and then it also has a shot indicator. So it shoots a little LED dot out the barrel uh, that can be sighted in, I'm guessing. And then that way, if you're in one, like a simulator or some sort of a environment where you've got like a screen or something that's being projected, an, you know, a scenario is being projected, and then you've got some kind of a little reader that's looking for that red dot in order to triangulate whatever, like, you know, your shot on the on the scene to be like one of those shoot, no shoot type of scenario trainings. Right, it can do that. And then it can also work with those like target programs or apps What will like watch your your, your uh, stationary target on the wall and just record where the laser dots hit in what order and that kind of stuff. I think they can even show you like your squiggle. Like when you pull the trigger, it'll shoot that red laser dot and it is gonna be moving because unless you're a robot, you're gonna move it. And then they can even record, you know, some of those apps and stuff can record your movement during the trigger break, which can be, you know, super critical for marksmanship type shooting, right? So I know people won't shut up yeah. about them, they love them, but they're 400 bucks, so they're nowhere near, and they're, you know, it's like saying to an old guy, hey, look, it, we made a thing for introduction to guns that's great and new. I'm like, right. I don't care, like, it's awesome for you, but I'm, I know how to pull a trigger already, and I'm not practicing that anymore. Right. But, uh, so it's, yeah, I mean, it's awesome, but, and I know a lot of people like them, but like, say, if I can move it on and help you guys with something and like, say, figure out the only actually stipulation or requirement I'll ask is that, you know, you give uh, Charlie and Matt uh, something in there because, and then that might be a burden for what you guys are trying to do. So if it doesn't work, I get it. We can do something else with it. But um, if you can make that work, then hopefully that can help you guys get to shot. And thanks to Charlie and Matt for moving that to me. Uh, I'm guessing you know, they would appreciate some kind of review. And I don't think I would be able to give them anything, you know, cert or them any kind of return on that because, you know, nobody's going to watch my channel for a review on that pistol. Yeah. Um, let's see. So, um, yeah, with that, we'll wrap this one up. And thanks, everybody, again. It looks like She Fires is going to be available next week. So if that works with others, that would be a fun conversation to have and hopefully beneficial for everybody going and everybody who's uh, just interested in paying attention and rooting for those individuals who do value their voice going forward into 2023. All right, anything else on the way out? What nope. do you got? Anything else today? Ghost has a show tonight. Yeah, Arm Citizen Podcast tonight. I might actually get a video dropped on uh, evolution of my EDC rotation. We'll see. Um, I've had an auction last night with a bunch of stuff. Thanks to everybody who bid. If you are listening to this and you're one of the people that bid, let me know and I'll uh, hook you up. I don't send the stuff out from the auction, but you know I can just send you stuff. And then uh, tonight... I have uh, auctions happening over at Pot of Gold for a bunch of patch sets, like just five, six patches in a set. They're at like $20 right now, so they're not super expensive. Uh, hopefully they will be because there's some rare patches in there. Um, and then uh, one of our playing card decks, those are made. We had those made the old-fashioned way where they take a piece of card stock that's as thick as a playing card, and they print the card out on one side and the backs on the other, and they stamp it all out, the entire deck, out of like a poster in one one move so before they cut them up into decks of cards we bought a bunch of just the sheets and they're the size of a poster but they're real heavy and then uh you know they're the cards they're a deck of cards 
We have those for sale at the at the store for a hundred bucks if you're ever interested in buying one. Uh, we roll them up into a tube and ship them to you. But uh, over on the auction, we've got a sheet with the uh, an uncut sheet with the a uh, couple of decks of cards at auction. To try to raise some funds. So if anybody's interested in that, or you know somebody who might be, uh, you know that's uh, what we got going on tonight. We'll be watching that live. There's like a zillion. It's 211 auctions or lots, and almost all of it is bulk ammo reloading components or like my patches <laughs> it's pretty much all ammo and reloading components and some some reloading machines and stuff so if you're interested in any of those things uh watch that while you're listening to ghost show or whatever or throw some bids in now you don't have to be there when the bidding's happening uh, let's see oh i did that okay all right well, thanks i should get i'll put this in for an outro i guess Tonight's episode, Murder by the Numbers. GearWebsites.com is your source for firearms-based playing cards and books. We also have mugs, shirts, and posters with designs that we've made live. Of course, we have patches. Every Friday is Free Patch Friday. We appreciate your support. Thank you for shopping at GearWebsites.com. Thank you for supporting our projects. If you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee, check out our Patreon channel. The guys and gals at gunwebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thank you for watching gunwebsites.com. Do, 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 do.